In a galaxy where hope is but a distant memory, the dark side of the Force has triumphed. Emperor Palpatine, unchallenged and absolute in his power, rules the galaxy with an iron fist. The Jedi Order, once the guardians of peace and justice, is nothing but a whispered legend, eradicated by the Sith's relentless purge. The Empire's shadow stretches across every star system, its reach unending and merciless. The Rebellion's final stand takes place on the desolate planet of Jakku. The last remnants of the Rebel Alliance gather for a desperate assault, led by Leia Organa, their indomitable leader. However, their plans are betrayed by a trusted ally, lured by the promises of power and safety. As the Imperial fleet descends upon Jakku, the Rebels are overwhelmed. Leia, captured and brought before Darth Vader, is forced to watch as her friends and comrades are systematically destroyed. Vader, now more machine than man and utterly loyal to his master, shows no mercy. Leia's hope dies in her eyes as the rebellion is crushed, the spark of resistance extinguished forever. Luke Skywalker, once the galaxy's last hope, has fallen to the dark side. After his defeat on Cloud City and the loss of his hand, Palpatine twisted Luke's despair and anger into a weapon of darkness. Trained as Darth Sidious's apprentice, Luke becomes Darth Vethys, a Sith Lord feared throughout the galaxy. Luke Skywalker's training is brutal, his mind and body broken and rebuilt to serve the Emperor. Darth Vethys leads the Imperial Inquisition, hunting down the few remaining Force-sensitive individuals and eradicating them without mercy. The galaxy trembles under his shadow, the promise of a new dawn replaced by the eternal night of the Sith. Leia Organa's captivity within the obsidian confines of the Imperial Palace is a fate worse than death. Stripped of her freedom and her friends, she's subjected to a daily barrage of psychological torment designed to break her spirit and bend her will to the dark side. Emperor Palpatine and Darth Vader, relentless in their cruelty, keep her informed of every rebel capture and execution, each report designed to chip away at the resolve that once made her a light of hope. Leia's cell is a stark, dark chamber, adorned with ancient Sith runes that pulse with a sinister energy. Every night, visions of her fallen comrades haunt her dreams, twisted by Palpatine's dark sorcery. The Emperor visits her often, his malevolent presence suffocating. He speaks to her of the futility of resistance, of the power she could wield, if only she would embrace the dark side. Your suffering can end, he hisses, his voice a poisonous whisper. Join us, and you will have the power to avenge your friends, to shape the galaxy as you see fit. But Leia's heart remains resolute, even as her body and mind weaken. Her latent force sensitivity, a trait that Palpatine values, keeps her connected to the faintest spark of hope, buried deep within her soul. In the shadow of the Emperor's throne, Darth Vethys stands as a testament to the triumph of darkness. Once Luke Skywalker, the Jedi's last hope, he is now a creature of the dark side, molded by Palpatine's brutal training and his own insidious despair. The transformation is complete, his humanity eroded until only the Sith Lord remains. Palpatine, ever the manipulator, decides that Leia's final test will be her brother's ultimate trial. To prove his absolute loyalty, Darth Vethys must either turn his sister to the dark side or end her life. The Emperor relishes the impending confrontation, the dark pleasure of sibling against sibling. In her cell, Leia senses Luke's approach long before he arrives. The bond they share, though twisted by the dark side, remains unbroken. When he finally stands before her, she sees not the brother she once knew, but a shadow of the man he was. Leia he says, his voice cold and devoid of the warmth she remembered. You must join us. Together we can end this suffering. Leia's eyes filled with a defiant fire meet his. I will never join you, Luke. The light will always find a way. The confrontation between Leia and Vethys is the culmination of Palpatine's dark plan. In the heart of the Imperial Palace, surrounded by the oppressive presence of the dark side, the siblings face each other. Leia's resistance only fuels the anger within Darth Vethys, a tempest of conflicting emotions. Palpatine watches with sadistic glee, his power palpable as he manipulates the very fabric of the Force. Stars outside the palace twist and distort, a cosmic display of his omnipotence and mastery of ancient Sith magic. The galaxy itself seems to tremble under his malevolent influence. 
prove your loyalty, Lord Vethys, Palpatine commands. Show me that the light holds no sway over you. Darth Vethys ignites his crimson lightsaber, its glow casting an eerie light over Leia's determined face. The battle is swift and brutal, a clash of wills as much as blades. Leia, though untrained, fights with the ferocity of a cornered lioness, her every move driven by the hope she refuses to relinquish. In the end, the outcome is inevitable. Darth Vethys, torn by the remnants of his past and the dark side's grip, strikes Leia down. Her body falls to the ground, but her spirit remains unbroken. Her final words, whispered through bloodied lips, echo in the chamber. There is still hope. Leia's death serves as the final catalyst for Darth Vethys' complete descent into darkness. Any lingering trace of Luke Skywalker is extinguished as he pledges his eternal loyalty to Emperor Palpatine. The galaxy, already smothered by the Empire's rule, descends into an even deeper abyss of despair. Leia's death reverberates through the Force like a death knell, a final shattering of hope that echoes across the galaxy. Darth Vethys stands over her lifeless body, his heart a barren wasteland, the last vestiges of Luke Skywalker obliterated. Palpatine watches with a malevolent smile, savoring the triumph of the dark side. You have done well, my apprentice, he croons, placing a gnarled hand on Vethys's shoulder. With your loyalty proven, we shall usher in an era of unparalleled darkness. Vethys bows his head, accepting his fate. He is the Emperor's instrument now, a blade of shadow to be wielded against any who dare resist. The galaxy bends to the Sith's will, and the iron grip of the Empire tightens, choking the last breaths of freedom. Yet, in the farthest reaches of the galaxy, whispers of rebellion still linger. In the lawless territories of the Outer Rim, a glimmer of hope persists. In a rundown cantina on the dusty planet of Tatooine, a group of forgotten rebels gather, their spirits unbroken despite the odds. Han Solo and Chewbacca, believed dead by the Empire, sit at a dimly lit table, their eyes scanning the room for familiar faces. They're joined by a motley crew of smugglers, outlaws, and former rebels, each one a beacon of defiance in a galaxy shrouded in darkness. The cantina was a hive of activity, filled with the hum of conversations and the clinking of glasses. The air was thick with the aroma of exotic spices and the sound of a mournful tune played on an ancient instrument. Despite the oppressive shadow of the Empire, there was a sense of camaraderie among the patrons, a shared understanding of the struggle that bound them together. Han raised his glass, his voice carrying above the din. To Leia, he said solemnly, and to all those who fought and fell for the cause, they may be gone, but their spirit lives on. Chewbacca roared in agreement, his eyes filled with a mixture of sorrow and determination. The other rebels raised their glasses in unison, a silent vow to continue the fight, no matter the cost. Over the next few years, Darth Sidious, Vader, and Vethys' reign over the universe went unchallenged. Han and Chewbacca did their utmost to stay one step ahead of the Empire, avoiding capture at every turn. During this time, many covert operations were carried out by the rebels, gathering crucial information. It became apparent that the Sith Lords had grown overconfident, almost drunk on the power they possessed. Despite this newfound intelligence, Han knew that challenging the Sith would be impossible without any Jedi in their ranks. The Empire's grip was ironclad, and the rebels needed a spark of hope, a force to counterbalance the dark power that loomed over the galaxy. Han and Chewbacca, having narrowly eluded capture on an intelligence mission near Crate, swiftly engaged the Millennium Falcon's hyperdrive, evading a flotilla of Imperial Star Destroyers. Their perilous journey concluded on the desert planet of Tatooine, where they navigated the dusty streets to the Moss Eisley Cantina, intent on divulging their findings to the gathered rebels regarding the menacing Imperial Armada from which they had narrowly escaped. Han and Chewbacca's entrance into the cantina created a ripple of excitement among the gathered rebels. The smoky, dimly lit room buzzed with the murmur of voices discussing strategies and exchanging vital information. As Han leaned in to share the critical data they had risked their lives to gather, Chewbacca's guttural growls punctuated the conversation, adding gravity to their tale of close calls and near misses with the Imperial fleet. Suddenly, the atmosphere shifted. A cloaked figure, 
previously unnoticed in the corner, stood up and began to make his way towards the group. His movements were purposeful, his presence commanding attention. The chatter in the cantina died down to a whisper, then to complete silence as the figure approached. With a deliberate motion, he pulled back his hood, revealing the face of a young man with intense eyes that seemed to bore into each rebel present. His expression was one of unwavering determination, a force of will that was palpable. I am Galen Marrick, he announced, his voice cutting through the silence like a knife. But you might know me as Starkiller. The name sent a shiver through the room. Whispers of recognition and fear rippled through the crowd. Starkiller was a name synonymous with power and legend, a figure of both awe and dread in the galaxy's turbulent history. Han's eyes narrowed, his hand instinctively moving towards his blaster. Chewbacca growled softly, a note of caution in his tone. The rebels exchanged uneasy glances, unsure whether to trust this unexpected arrival. Galen Marek, Starkiller, stood firm, his gaze steady. I come with a message, and an offer, he continued. The Empire's power is growing, but so is the resistance against it. I can help you. Together, we can bring down the Empire. The tension in the room was visible as the rebels weighed his words. The stakes were high, and trust was a rare commodity. But in the eyes of Starkiller they saw a fierce resolve and a glimmer of hope. A hope that, perhaps with his aid, they could turn the tide in their favor. Han broke the silence, his voice measured but firm. All right, Starkiller, let's hear what you have to say. I was trained to be a weapon of the Empire, but I have chosen a different path. I stand with you now. The rebels exchange glances, a mixture of hope and wariness in their eyes. Han narrows his gaze, studying Starkiller. Why should we trust you? He asks, his tone challenging. Starkiller meets his gaze unflinchingly. Because I know the enemy better than anyone, and because Leia's legacy lives on in all of us. The Force may be shadowed, but it is not extinguished. We will rise, and we will fight. The rebels murmur among themselves, the weight of Starkiller's words sinking in. Han nods slowly, a glimmer of hope returning to his eyes. Well then, he says with a roguish grin, Let's show the Empire that the light will always find a way. In the heart of the Outer Rim, the embers of rebellion begin to burn once more. The galaxy remains under the iron fist of the Sith, but a new hope flickers in the darkness. The rebels, united by their shared loss and unyielding spirit, prepare to take up the mantle of resistance. Starkiller, once a weapon of the Empire, now stands as a beacon of defiance. His knowledge of the enemy's tactics and weaknesses proves invaluable as the Rebels plan their next moves. Together, they forge a new alliance, one that blends the ferocity of the old rebellion with the cunning and strength of Starkiller's training. The Empire's shadow may be vast, but the light of the Force, though dimmed, is eternal. As long as there are those willing to stand against tyranny, the flame of hope will never be truly extinguished. And in the farthest corners of the galaxy, a new dawn begins to break led by the most unlikely of heroes. Deep within the heart of the Imperial Palace on Coruscant, Emperor Palpatine sits upon his dark, imposing throne. The vast expanse of the galaxy lies before him, a chessboard upon which he moves his pieces with malevolent precision. His eyes, yellow and piercing, survey the hollow map, displaying the conquered territories and the remnants of resistance. Darth Vader, the enforcer of Palpatine's will, stands silently beside the throne. Once Anakin Skywalker, now more machine than man, Vader is a fearsome presence, his very aura radiating darkness and power. His respirator hisses rhythmically, a constant reminder of his transformation and loyalty to the Emperor. My apprentice, Palpatine says, his voice a whisper that carries the weight of command. The rebellion is but a fading ember, yet there are whispers of new alliances in the Outer Rim, we cannot afford to let these embers spark a fire. Vader nods. I will crush them, my master. Their hope will be extinguished. Han Solo and Galen Marek, also known as Starkiller, move through the fringes of the galaxy, seeking out old allies and new recruits to join their cause. Their journey takes them to forgotten worlds and hidden enclaves where the spirit of rebellion still flickers. One day, while resting on the remote moon of Yavin IV, Starkiller senses a powerful presence through the Force. 
It calls to him from a distant planet, urging him to follow. Han, there's something out there, Starkiller says, his eyes distant as he focuses on the sensation. Someone strong with the Force. We need to find them. Han nods, trusting Starkiller's instincts. All right, let's go check it out. The more allies we have, the better. They follow Starkiller's sense to a desolate planet hidden in the Outer Rim. After landing the Millennium Falcon, they trek through dense forests and treacherous terrain. The closer they get, the stronger the presence feels. Finally, they reach a secluded enclave where a lone figure, battle-worn and wary, stands guard. Who are you? The figure demands, his lightsaber ignited and ready. I'm Galen Merrick, Starkiller replies, stepping forward with his own lightsaber at his side. We're here seeking allies to fight the Empire. The figure's expression softens slightly. I'm Cal Kestis. I've been fighting the Empire alone for too long. If you're serious about ending their tyranny, then I'm with you. As they prepare to leave the planet, Starkiller receives another vision. This one leads them to a hidden base where an old ally, Rom Kota, has been living in exile. Starkiller and Kota share a powerful connection from their past, and the reunion is emotional. Kota, we need your help, Starkiller says, embracing his former mentor. The rebellion needs you. Kota nods, his eyes filled with determination. It's time to take the fight back to the Empire. The galaxy trembles under the Sith rulership of Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, and their dark apprentice, Darth Vethis, formerly known as Luke Skywalker. Their rule is absolute, but within the ranks of the Empire, discontent brews. The ruthless trio's brutal methods and unrelenting oppression have sparked significant unrest among the Imperial officers. One such officer, Grand Admiral Thrawn, renowned for his tactical genius and strategic brilliance, harbors deep reservations about the Emperor's methods. Observing the growing discontent and the mounting losses against the scattered but resilient rebel forces, Thrawn begins to take matters into his own hands. Unbeknownst to the Empire, he starts to gather loyalists who share his vision of a more calculated and strategic approach to rule. Meanwhile, Starkiller and Han Solo, bolstered by the newfound strength of Cal Kestis and Rom Kota, continue their search for allies. Their quest leads them to the Outer Rim, where whispers of a legendary warrior and a mysterious child with incredible potential have reached their ears. On the barren plains of Mandalore, they encounter the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, and Grogu, the Force-sensitive child. Initial tensions rise as the Mandalorian, wary of strangers, confronts the new arrivals. However, upon sensing Grogu's connection to the Force, Starkiller convinces Din of their shared goal, to overthrow the Empire and bring peace to the galaxy. As the Rebel Alliance prepares for their next move, Grand Admiral Thrawn's covert operations catch their attention. Recognizing a potential ally within the Empire, Starkiller arranges a clandestine meeting with Thrawn. The meeting is tense, filled with suspicion and cautious respect. Thrawn, impressed by Starkiller's power and the Rebels' tenacity, proposes an uneasy alliance. Thrawn devises an elaborate gladiator event to be hosted on a newly conquered planet to honor the Empire. The spectacle promises to be grand enough to draw Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, and Darth Vethis to the same location. This convergence will allow Thrawn and the Rebels to enact their final plan to eradicate the Sith from the galaxy. The strain of keeping his plan secret from Palpatine takes its toll on Thrawn. He becomes increasingly paranoid, even having his clothing lined with cortosis to defend against potential lightsaber strikes. Meanwhile, Starkiller, Han Solo, and their new recruits have been successfully dismantling several of the Empire's strategic strongholds across the galaxy, using intel from Thrawn. On one such mission, they discover Ahsoka Tano while the Mandalorian and Grogu are on a parallel mission to destroy the same base. This convergence of efforts bolsters their ranks significantly. Later, a mysterious masked mercenary named Nero Sward offers his services to the rebels. Despite his enigmatic nature and unknown past, Nero exudes an aura that even the Jedi find reassuring. As the Alliance prepares for their final confrontation, tensions rise but are tempered by a shared sense of purpose. The rebels and Thrawn's loyalists focus their efforts on the upcoming gladiator event 
knowing it will be their best chance to strike a decisive blow. The day of the event arrives and the Grand Arena buzzes with anticipation. The Sith Lords, oblivious to the trap set for them, revel in the spectacle. As the games reach their peak, the Rebels launch their assault. The Rebel Alliance enacts their daring plan with Thrawn's intricate design. An explosion detonates under the seating area, where the Sith Lords are positioned at the start of the Gladiator event. The blast has little effect on Palpatine and Vader, but it temporarily knocks Darth Vethus unconscious, allowing the Jedi to focus their efforts on the remaining Sith Lords. A fierce battle erupts within the arena. The Alliance's Jedi, including Starkiller Cal Kestis, Rom Kota, and Ahsoka Tano, face off against Palpatine's Inquisitors. The combined strength of the Alliance Jedi allows them to handle the Inquisitors with remarkable efficiency. Despite the Jedi's formidable power, the battle turns grim. In a heartbreaking moment, Ahsoka Tano is killed by Darth Vader. Her death becomes the catalyst for the Mandalorian to prioritize Grogu's safety, deciding to exit the arena with the child. Meanwhile, the mysterious masked mercenary Nero Sward surprises everyone with his speed and precision, taking down stormtroopers and inquisitors almost like a green blur. His prowess adds a critical edge to the Alliance's efforts. In the heart of the conflict, Starkiller confronts Darth Vader. Their duel is intense, shaking the arena to its core. Drawing on the strength of his allies and the hope of the rebellion, Starkiller manages to overpower Vader and deliver the final devastating blow. As Vader falls, Ram Kota engages Emperor Palpatine. The dark power of the Emperor is overwhelming, and despite Kota's bravery, Palpatine strikes him down in a ruthless display of power. Seeing Kota's death, Starkiller rushes to aid Cal Kestis. With Vader defeated and Rom Kota dead, Starkiller and Cal Kestis combine their strengths to face Emperor Palpatine. The Emperor's dark power is overwhelming, but the united force of Starkiller and Cal proves insurmountable. With a desperate final strike, Cal pierces Palpatine's heart, ending his reign of terror. With Palpatine and Vader defeated, the Rebels turn their attention to Darth Vethus as he regains consciousness. As he awakens, he sees the lifeless bodies of Vader and Palpatine. Blinded by an overwhelming surge of dark side rage, he doesn't recognize Han Solo and Chewbacca standing before him. His anger completely consumes him, the rage clearly visible in his burning red eyes. Vethus goes to strike Han and Chewbacca down. Han, seeing the murderous intent in Vethus' eyes, steps forward. Luke, you were once the galaxy's greatest hope, he says, his voice filled with emotion. Remember who you were before Palpatine twisted your mind. But Vethus does not hear him. Chewbacca growls softly, a mournful sound that tugs at Vethus' heart. But it is not enough to break through the darkness. Just as Vethus is about to strike, Nero Sward reveals his true identity, the mythical Jedi Sentinel Soren Ward. In a swift motion, Soren intervenes, deflecting Vethus's lightsaber strike and disarming him with ease. Luke, Soren says, placing a hand on his head, see what you were meant to be. Soren channels the Force, showing Luke thousands of alternate timelines where he chose the light. Luke sees his potential for good far outweighing the darkness that has consumed him. He understands that his future, untainted by the past, could be a light of hope for the galaxy. As the dark hold over him breaks, memories flood back. The realization of killing his sister, Leia, hits him with full force. Luke collapses to his knees, sobbing uncontrollably. I, I remember, he whispers, his eyes filling with tears. I remember Han and Chewbacca rushed to his side, offering comfort. She said there is still hope, Luke chokes out between sobs. She knew all along. As Soren watched on, he remembered the conversation he had with Yoda the last time their destinies crossed paths. The light will never be extinguished while I hold breath, my old friend, Soren thought. Knowing his duty was done for now, he left the arena without a trace.